Afternoon everyone, my name is Emmanuel under my YouTube alias of Uncharismatic. I'm going to film a collection video of my Godzilla collection that I've been building over the past 30 years. Uh, some items are MIA, but for the most part this is everything. So let's get started. And I'm going to have to do some ladder climbing here in the video, so bear with me because I live in an apartment in Midtown Manhattan and my ceilings are luckily high, but like all apartments, the space is not that much. So we're gonna start off, sorry for the, the light. This is the X Plus 1968 King Ghidorah. Um, this is the original release. It's a Rick Boy release. I'm still fidgeting with the lights, so I apologize. So it's the Rick Boy release, and it comes with the two um, spaceships from Destroy All Monsters. I have that in another case. But right next to him is the Bandai Great Monster Series Bronze Godzilla. This is Godzilla 1964 with the Bronze Paint App uh, Limited Edition. Right here we have probably my favorite stylized King Ghidorah. You're gonna see a lot of King Ghidorahs uh, in this collection. This is the original release Gigabrain and the blue teal version. Sorry, no, not the blue teal version. This is the metallic blue. There's a teal version coming up. The Bandai um, Super Big Scale Final Premium Godzilla. Largest figure in my collection. And the light there is not that great. So we're gonna go back down the ladder. We're relatively high up. This case is, has most of my X plus. So we're gonna start here at the bottom. Um, that is not an X plus, that's a Bandai creation. Let me open the case. My dad gave it to me, or my dad bought it for me, so I'm never going to get rid of it. And this is as good as place as any. That's a not nice shot right there. That's the original release X Plus Shodai Goji with the original release Batra, Bandai Creation, uh, Gigon, Final Wars Gigon, the Yuji Sakai 92 on the left, and the 91 on the right. Awesome figures. The 91 design is probably in my top three Godzilla designs of all time. And in this case, this is my 30 centimeter Showas. These are all original release X plus, except for the Titanosaurus, which is diamond. You have Mechagodzilla 74, Mechagodzilla 75, Hedora, Gigon, Godzilla 62, and Mothra Larva 61. This is the second shelf of 30 centimeter. This is the Angura 68. This is the first X plus figure I ever bought. Um, I think in maybe about nine years ago, 2009. So Gorosaurus, Manda, Baragon, and Minya, as you can see, it's kind of a tight fit. There is Rodan 64 in the background. This is the Rick Boy. Godzilla 64. This is the original Rick Boy. There's two of them. One lights up. This is not the light up one. I don't really don't really like light ups because it, it's hard to just pick up the figure and, and fidget with it. You've got to be cognizant of the light up mechanism. Uh, anyway, so this is the original with the extra jaw. So, sorry. Uh, oh, and yeah, I got I got the X Plus rep. Uh, G Okamoto to sign the foot on October 6th of 2017. He was here at New York Comic Con. That actually happens to also be my birthday, so that was super cool. Uh, so that does it for that shelf. Some X Plus business cards. I didn't realize I left them in there. <clears throat> Komonga. 
I have arachnophobia, so Kamungo was in the box for a really long time, years, like two years. The Mothra and Manda from the Destroy All Monsters set. Ibira, Mothra 64. Godzilla 64, this is the Rick Boy with the two Mothra larvae that come with it. Rodan 64, also the Rick Boy with the Mothra larva from Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster. The Jet Jaguar, standard release. And in here we have Gareth Goji, as the Japanese like to refer to the Godzilla 2014 or the legendary Godzilla. This is the original release Rick Boy with the Muto Rick. I, I tend to buy the Rick Boys when they give you an additional figure. Um, this is the Godzilla Raids again, Godzilla 55, probably my least favorite of the X Plus. Up here we have some 25 centimeter. These are, this is the, uh, the um, Keelak ships, or the Keelak ship, sorry, my hand's in the way, the Keelak ship, and the Keelak ship when it's on fire after having been attacked by the Moonlight SY3, which I have somewhere, there it is. Uh, so this is Kamakurus, King Cesar, Varan, and Angurus. And in the next cube, these are all 25 centimeter, Hedora, Minya, Baragon, Gorosaurus in the back, uh, Godzilla 68 for Destroyer Monsters, this, this was a Rick Boy that came with Godzilla 68. The Moonlight SY3 is a Rick Boy accessory that came with the 25 centimeter Angurus. This is not X Plus. This is um, Ganyme from Bandai Museum. But they were Bandai Museum, I think Plex produced it for them. And I can't remember the exact relationship between Plex and X Plus. But as you can see, it fits right in. You wouldn't be able to tell that it's not X Plus. And on the top shelf, we have 25 centimeter Mogara or Mogara or whatever. Gigon and Gabra. I did not get the Rick of Gabra. The Megalon is not the X Plus Megalon. That is the Marmot Real Soft Vinyl Megalon. And I might get the Megalon the diamond reissue. So we're gonna have to go up the ladder again. Sorry for the noise. Uh, let's take a look at this first. Yeah, this is not this is a nice, you have the X plus Godzilla 65, the Rick boy. Super Mecha Godzilla. In the middle is the Monster Maker 28, Ghidra, the three-headed monster Godzilla. Very beat up. It was injured during my move to this apartment. Um, I hope to get it fixed. I hope X Plus releases a toy of this. This is the 30 centimeter scale, which means they would have to release a 30 centimeter King Ghidorah 64, which won't happen. I know they're releasing a 25 centimeter one. I'm trying to be careful because I'm opening the door and his fist fell out. This is the Takara Combat Joe Deluxe. One of my favorite Godzilla toys because it kind of symbolizes the, the relationship between Godzilla and another toy line that I collect, which is Transformers. And I'll explain that later on. This is the box to the world's greatest monsters, Rodan from Mattel. This is probably the most key item in my collection. This is an original Marison plan model. Uh, this cost quite a bit of money to acquire. I don't have the original figure out. It's inside the box. There are tons of reproductions made of this, but the historical significance of this kit is 
from this, the Marathon Godzilla was made, which is the vinyl representation of this kit, and that is the first Japanese Godzilla toy ever produced. So this kit came before the first Japanese Godzilla toy ever produced. And I'm gonna climb another step on the ladder. Here we have the X Plus Yuji Sakai Gigantic Godzilla 54. I, I don't know if this is a Rick accessory or not. Um, I certainly didn't buy the Rick, but I found this inside. The Death Ghidorah. Uh, one of the Marmot Giant Godzilla 64s. I can't remember which release it was. This is a pretty old release. And here's a view of from the rear of the um, super big scale final premium Bandai. So I'm gonna temporarily pause the video. Oh man, his hand came out again while I climbed down the ladder because now I'm, I'm relatively high up. So my audio actually cut out for about five minutes. So I'm gonna record this overlay. And right now we're going to the King Ghidorah 64 polystone statue by X plus this is a 2003 or 2002 release I believe this is quite large and at its release was the largest mass-produced King Ghidorah that you could buy uh, you can see right here that the horns this is an earlier edition the horns are installed backwards or sculpted backwards and I'm also missing the small gate uh, these are Bandai uh, test shots of the King Ghidorah 64 sculpt on either side and Right now we're gonna go to a shelf that has a lot of sentimental value to me uh, these are the Showa Godzilla Bandai's that uh, My father bought when we were going around downtown Manhattan looking for them right here on the left is the six inch Imperial Godzilla that I reviewed maybe like nine years ago uh, this was the first Godzilla toy that I ever bought. Uh, I, I got it uh, about 10 blocks from where I grew up in a store that's long gone. Uh, the, the Bandai Godzilla 64 is one of my favorite figures. It, it's not totally accurate, but the charm and the spray coloration is great. And right there, I'm, I'm pointing at the Mecha Godzilla Bandai. This is the actually the first Japanese Godzilla toy that I ever bought, or that my dad bought for me, and I ever bought uh, in a store for Forbidden Planet, which started this whole 30-year journey of collecting. So the Imperial started it, and then the Mecha Godzilla really catalyzed it. So this shelf here is is more. Uh, show us as you can see and this is the Bandai 64 plastic tag Godzilla with uh, Hedora, Baragon, Megalon, King Kong and Kamakuras in the corner and yes yet again another King Ghidorah as you can tell I like King, King Ghidorah a lot and this is the destroy all monsters tag which is the rarest Bandai that you can get in terms of tagged bandais that were released for general uh, for the general public you could see there the name king Ghidorah and katakana this next shelf is the figurines from uh, godzilla vs destroyer so right here i'm going to show that the tag has been signed by kenpachiro satsuma the suit actor and of course the godzilla forever uh, Meltdown Godzilla along with Destroyer and the Aggregate Destroyer and Godzilla Jr. Uh, all gifts from my father for Christmas 1996. Uh, Christmas 1995, I think. Um, and then my only shelf of vintage. I wish I had more. This is the Bullmark Godzilla all the way in the back, Marathon in front, the original Bullmark King Ghidorah, and then the Bandai Rishu Giant. King Ghidorah from Bullmark and Bullmark Mechanicong. And then as we go up to the top, I'm gonna to show the illustration or or kind of uh, art by these, the graffiti artist Kongroy that's been signed by Haruto Nakajima. This is part of one of a three-part set that my girlfriend bought me for my birthday. So it's very, very cool. 
and there's a picture of Haruo Nakajima signing the the artwork. And then we go around to the corner. We're gonna showcase, or we're gonna show. I'm gonna show uh, the the second one. This is um, the the Millennium Godzilla by Sutomo Kitagawa. And there he is signing it. And of course, the 14 inch or 13 inch Imperial large scale, the second Godzilla toy ever that I that I got. I think I do have a review also from like eight years ago. The NECA six inch tall. I used to have the 12 inch tall one. I had to sell them. The Bandai Grand King Ghidorah. I think this is the best King Ghidorah vinyl that Bandai has ever produced. It's large. It's imposing. It's actually to scale. And bring it to, to another shelf with the Space Godzilla um, Mogu Goji and Gido Goji, along with the Bullmark die cast Godzilla that's also signed by Haruo Nakajima. Uh, I was lucky to get him to sign all of this stuff. More Showa. <laughs> 8 inch scale bandais. Uh, I have the tags of stuff here stacked in a pile. Um, one of these is signed by Haruro Nakajima. It's the tag for the Godzilla 64. Uh, I, I don't know where it is. It's, it's in one of the stacks. Uh, here's another Godzilla. This is the... Uh, Oh, this is the the King Goji variant. There's a yen price still in there of 1,200 yen. Uh, this is yet another King Ghidorah 64. This one's the plastic tag variant. So it's tucked underneath. Jet Jaguar leaning back like a gangster. So I have to set him correct. Uh, more Godzilla Forever stuff. Um, next shelf down is the my Mothra shelf with Mothra and Batra. Mogura 94, Godzilla 93, and we'll swing around here. Yet another Giga Brain. This this is the glow in the dark Giga Brain King Ghidorah. This is the X Plus Gigantic with a picture of Kanpachiro Satsuma, the Hisi suit actor. There's another um, signed uh, art by Kongroy. Uh, that is a picture of my mom in the Godzilla case, along with the other stack of the tags. I have... Oh, look at that. There's another signed tag. Um, this is the, the Bandai 1984 original release, uh, signed by Kampachido Satsuma. Uh, there's the one signed by Haruo Nakajima. That's the 64 tag for the, uh, the Godzilla 64. Mecha King Ghidorah, my favorite King Ghidorah design. Um, more King Ghidorahs. This is the this is the 1988 version. This is the counterpart to the other Godzilla in the other case with the um, Godzilla 62 on it. This is another King Ghidorah. Which one's this? Ah, yes, and uh, another Destroyer All Monsters tagged King Ghidorah. I'm you know I'm hoarding these Ghidorahs like no one's business. Uh, plastic tag Mecha Godzilla. This is a pretty beat up Mogura, which is my regret. The antennas broke off in my move from my previous apartment to this apartment. This is a Marmot Real Soft Vinyl. So this is uh, uh, in the same line as the Megalon and the uh, the other more frequently known ones. This one is, is pretty rare. I haven't seen another person with it. Uh, I was lucky to get it. This is uh, the King Goji with the little pamphlet and the tag and the plastic. Biolante and various of the Meter Goji variants, the Bandai Green Crystal, which uh, I hold it up to the light. It's semi-transparent. There was this whole fiasco of of people dying theirs or whatever. So the way to prove that yours is, is real is to see if it's translucent. Uh, the Godzilla Final Wars down here with Kaiser Ghidorah. And that does it for the Bandai shelf. Up here we have the X Plus Biolante. This is the original release. 
So mine does not have the fancy light up. The first 25 centimeter X Plus that I ever bought, the Godzilla 89, I bought it because I read that they were releasing Biollante, so I went back and grabbed this right away because I knew the price would go up. Um, I'm gonna do a review of this guy, the great, the Bandai Great Monster series, King Ghidorah. Very, very nostalgic with this. Uh, I have a great story, um, a nice, a nice toy collecting story that goes with it. Uh, this is the only other representation of Death Ghidorah that I have. It's the original release Bandai. This is kind of like as, as close as we're gonna get to a gigantic release Anguirus. This is the Aoshima Anguirus 72. I forget what scale it is. And then back here, I love this guy. I actually just got him like last week. The Shogun Warriors, or no, the uh, World's Greatest Monsters, Rodan. Um, companion piece to the Shogun Warriors, it has a re really large wingspan. So here I have another shelf of most of the six inch Bandai that I have. Most of this is comprised of the Bandai 50th Anniversary Memorial box set. Such an absolutely fantastic box set. I can't stress enough if you're a semi-serious Godzilla collector, you should hunt this down. This is a really classic historical set filled with all new sculpts, most of which aren't released by Bandai anywhere else. From a Godzilla standpoint, I have a couple of non-memorial box ones tucked in here. Uh, this is the Godzilla um, 73. Uh, the, the Jet Jaguar, Shin Godzilla Theater. Uh, I think he came in the memorial box. The latest Frankenstein. I don't have Sand and Gyra. Uh, I was late in getting them. The very much lauded Godzilla 64, six inch from this line. Again, very, very key uh, set. If if you're if you have the money and you have the means, and if you don't have it, highly recommend it. This is my random Bandai shelf with stuff I don't have room to display. Uh, this stuff came from my stay in the uh, the Godzilla room in the Godzilla Hotel in Shinjuku. Uh, I, I probably can do a video of the stuff that they gave me for that. Uh, down here we have the Godzilla Phileas from the animated movie Godzilla 2000, Warga in the back. Theater Megagirus. My only trend masters is I still have these two my mom bought for me. So like the stuff that my dad got, uh, I'm never gonna get rid of these. Some people are not crazy about trend masters. Some have entire collections built around them. I am kind of indifferent because I some of the sculpts I don't mind, some I do. But those have super sentimental value. These are my stylized vinyl. Pilot Ace and Marmot Black Gallery. I love Pilot Ace. I bought three more Pilot Ace, which are coming. Uh, they were not cheap. So this is the Monster Zero Pilot Ace set, Rodan and Godzilla 65. It came with the controller from Planet X. These are the various little finger puppets that come with some of the Pilot Ace. Marmot Black Gallery, King Ghidorah 64, Gigon. This whole shelf has Pilot Ace. The, the red in the back, Lucky Bag, Godzilla 67 with with Minya, Lucky Bag, Hedorah, Gigon, Godzilla 64, Godzilla 54, Godzilla 62, Mecha Godzilla. And all the figures from the 40th anniversary Godzilla Memorial Box. So I, again, another Memorial Box. I, th I think these are fairly historical. Um, not historical in the sense that they're like super rare or, or super, super expensive, but again, like really key release, highly, highly recommended. Um, I, my collection started out with Bandai uh, from, from, you know, from, being a serious collector, so I, I'm, I'm always going to have some sort of Bandai uh, representation. Marmot Giant 62. A couple more Marmots. This is the box 
to the 40th anniversary memorial. Very nice, colorful box. Uh, reissue of there. There are two issues of the Bandai Great Monster Series Godzilla. So you saw the bronze earlier. So this is the reissue from I think 1988. The original was in 1984. Another Marmot Giant 64. The Mothra Larva 64 Large Version 61. Sorry, uh, Marmot Giant Mecha Godzilla. Jack specific 50 centimeter scale uh, Gareth Goji the box for the 50th anniversary memorial let's go up here to Giga Brains I love Giga Brain um, I don't recall off the top of my head which variants these come from but you know, Godzilla 64, Godzilla 64, Godzilla 62. This is my favorite variant of Godzilla 64. I think this is a super fast exclusive. Nice menacing red eyes. Diagon metallic blue. Uh, the only Marmot uh, Deskoji that I have. I know people go crazy. They have like 10, 15, 20 copies. Um, I only have one. This is one, uh, uh, my favorite variant of the Destroyer from Marmot. There was a Giga Brain 65 tucked in the background. Giga Brain had Dora. Absolutely fantastic figure. M1. Uh, Mecha King Ador from Mormit. I love like bronze slash gold figures. This is a Marasan Mothra. Marasan Metallic Hedora, Marmot Megalon, whoops, Marmot Gorosaurus, uh, more Marmots, I love this Godzilla 55 with the translucent hand and the blue eyes, you really get a sense of cold. Uh, more X Plus, Final Wars, Destroyer. GMK King Adora. Ah, uh, there's the my my uh, M1, one of the many M1 Haruo Nakajima figures. This one he signed at the base. Uh, I think this was for a museum exhibit. This is a nice photo of who's who in the Godzilla pantheon. Kitagawa-san. I think that's his wife. I'm not sure. Haruo Nakajima in the middle. His daughter Sonoe to the right, Kenpachiro Satsuma to the right of so Sonoe, and Shinji Nishikawa, designer. Any of the Hisi, a Kaiju, uh, Marmot, Monster Heaven, Abira, a couple more Monster Heavens, uh, uh, Parababy, Marmot. Uh, down here we have the giant Medicom release of the Desugoji. Marmot Monster Heaven Biolante. Uh, this is a test shot of the Bandai uh, Godzilla 95. And didn't think I'd leave out the King Ghidorah Pilot Ace. Like I said, I love gold figures, bronze figures. This is the King Ghidorah uh, Gold Pilot Ace. Sorry, the Gold Pilot Ace King Ghidorah 64. This was only available if you got the whole set of the uh, Gold Pilot Ace, of which I don't have a single one except for this King Ghidorah. Obviously, I bought, managed to get it separately. Uh, the uh, the another Pilot Ace King Ghidorah. These are knockoff Bandai King Ghidorahs. Uh, one's pink, obviously. One's green. Uh, they were relatively cheap. And I set up this ladder in the interim. So up the ladder we go. And here, you guys know the drill. This is the X plus, sorry it's dark again. The X plus gigantic 65, 62. This is the original release X plus gigantic 95 based off of the Kaibutsuya kit. Very, very nice detail. This is actually the favorite release 
for me out of all the releases because of the burning effect. I know it's not as suit accurate as the SDC version, but you can see the, the burning effect is really well done. It's like layered or you can see like right there, it kind of looks like it's, it's pulsating in a way. All right, so that's nice. And of course, as you notice, that's the tail to the Rick Gigantic series, Shin Godzilla. Uh, who is that? that? Oh, that's that's Final Wars uh, Monster Heaven Gigon. I don't know why he's tucked there in the corner. Uh, all you're gonna see is his foot. So we're not as high as the other ladder, but we're still relatively high. Oh, there's a there's a nice above the figure shot of the X Plus Biolante and the companion 25 centimeter Godzilla 89. I just, I'm gonna edit that out. Just move the camera around way too fast. My only monster arts, King Ghidorah, Mecha Godzilla. Uh, regular release Godzilla, Destroyer, and the 1989 um, uh, a battery uh, accessorized one, the Space Godzilla. I'm not really a big Monster Arts guy. Uh, with the same money, I'd rather got X Plus. Again, that's my preference. Uh, this this is the instruction and card that came with the orange super big scale. It's got signed by Kimpatri Satsuma. My various uh, comic books from the Marvel line. The, uh, I cannot remember for my life what this release is called, but there it is. The tail to the super big scale, because I can't fit. This Marmot, so this is from the Real Soft Vinyl Marmot line, which uh, the Mogura and um, the Megalon are, are from. This Marmot, I had at my desk at work, and I was sick one day, and someone messed around with it, and his jaw broke off. And I was busy at work, so I kind of left the jaw where it was. And the cleaning lady took the jaw and threw it out. <laughs> so I now have this jawless marmot. This is actually uh, the translucent orange vinyl one. So when I bought it, it was already built and painted. And when I bought it, the guy uh, installed batteries. This is kind of an example of why I don't uh, like electronics, because you have to pick it up with two hands uh, to fidget with it. So this table is like mostly my kits and stuff, which I'm not a model maker, model builder, or painter, so they're just sitting here. Kyoto Godzilla 89. Uh, this is the torso of a prototype slash test shot for the Bandai Big Scale uh, Godzilla. So you see it's in parts. Uh, I believe there are only three of these. So this is um, some old cards and stuff. Uh, my address for some of my um, my deliveries, the box to the Bandai Biolante, uh, some more kits, uh, this little thing here, another Bandai theater exclusive, the, I think everyone is going to agree, even when the X Plus Gigantic 64 comes out, this is the yardstick against which all large scale 50 centimeter most Sagojis are measured. Uh, I'm doing this with one hand, so unfortunately I can't open it. But anyway, this is the M1 50 centimeter scale sculpted by Yuji Sakai. Godzilla 54. There's a picture of Haro Nakajima holding the finished model. And this is the M1 Godzilla vs. Biolante kit. Signed on the side by Kenpachiro Satsuma. Again, unbuilt. Um, these are the legs. Ah, my kits. So I love King Ghidorah, as you may not have guessed. These are the Kaiju Freaks King Ghidorah releases. These are 30 centimeter scale. So X Plus, as you can tell, is unwilling to release any winged creature, save only for Rodan at the 30 centimeter scale, because as you can imagine, every single winged creature is pretty complicated, except again for Rodan. So the only way to get 30 centimeter King Ghidorah is to go the route of kits. 
the Zoke Kobo, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, sculpted by Yuji Sakai. This is the poster art version. Mecha King Ghidorah by Resin Chef, uh, Bandai, Plastic King Ghidorah, and another Mecha King Ghidorah. And we are rounding out the collection. There is Kenpachiro Satsuma. And we are coming now to what I consider to be the differentiator of my collection. Sorry about the figure and that. Something that, that is important to me as a collector. Kind of a, a treat for you guys for sticking around through this long video. Uh, first of all, the one convention where I got all these signatures from Haru Nakajima and Kenpachiro Satsuma, except for the picture, the the art that my girlfriend bought me and the Haruro Nakajima figure. Uh, where I got all these signatures was at the G-Con 98 when it was here. Uh, so I got the video game signed. This is the Haruro Nakajima autobiography, uh, which is also signed by him somewhere. There it is, uh, July 25th, 2010. Godzilla Toy Museum, quintessential must-have book for any serious Godzilla collector. Um, a lot of cool photos in here. Uh, can do a video review of this another time. The Illustrated Encyclopedia of Godzilla by Ed Gajasevsky. Uh, brought to a close by Toho, who threatened legal action because of all the photos inside. Very, very cool encyclopedia. And finally, the Action Figure News and Toy Review Winter 1992 issue. This got me started with Godzilla collecting. This, this informed me of what to look for and what was historically significant. So I'm always going to keep this around. So now we're going to get to the core of my collection and you can see this this black box. So we're going to we're going to get to this black box soon, but as you can see as or as you've been seeing, these are scripts. These are original Japanese scripts of the Godzilla movies. Of various Godzilla movies, so I'll start right away because I don't have much time and the video is quite long. This is the script to destroy all monsters. This is the version three script, dated January January 9th, nineteen sixty-eight. Um, there's a very interesting little paper in here. I don't know what it says because I can't read Japanese, uh, except for the monster names. So this is all handwritten. Right there, you can see the. Right there, you can see the monster names: uh, Godzilla, uh, Man Manila, King Ghidorah, Mothra, uh, Varan, Baragon, uh, King uh, Gorosaurus. Uh, I'm not going to struggle with all of them, but it's a nice little pamphlet that's handwritten. Uh, the script to Shin Godzilla, it has been used lightly, so I don't know, maybe an extra use this in produ production of the movie. Uh, you can see some of the handwriting there. Very, very cool. Probably the most striking of all the script covers because this is homaging the script cover to um, Godzilla 1954. This is very cool. This is the script to Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. There are there is film in here of the various characters. There's, you have a nice shot in the light. This is a heavily used script with annotations and there's even photographs in here. I think of like um, sets when they were doing um, principal photography and stuff. There is even a really awesome little photo slide in here of the head from Mecha King Ghidorah, which was part of the um, salvage effort to create Mechagodzilla. 
This is a script from Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. This is a copy of the script of Godzilla vs. Monster Zero. This is the script from the movie, I forget it, the name off the top of my head, the where Orochi appeared, Taketsuru uh, Orochi or something like that. This is the Toho movie, again, this is heavily used, um, where the titular character Orochi, Orochi is actually um, the inspiration of the Showa King Ghidorah. So these two scripts are Terror of Mechagodzilla and Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla. And this is a little uh, film clip of, you can kind of see it there, of Mechagodzilla. This is from the, the movie trailer. Uh, this script is for Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Again, very cool. Uh, my girlfriend wanted to make sure that I included these. These are the, the Thai baby um, gifts that she bought me. So here they are. And I kind of had to breeze through these scripts. Um, this is really cool so because it, it, it's, it was so heavily used. Now this is what I consider to be the core core. Oh, and I forgot the stuffed Shin Godzilla. That is my girlfriend's, uh, it's not mine. And this is what I consider to be the core. As I was saying, I consider this to be the core piece of my collection. This is a script from an unproduced Godzilla movie. This is um, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah Earth Defense Directive versus eventually what would be made as Godzilla versus Gigon. As you can see, this is very heavily used. This is really, really cool. It's something from that was used in production of a Godzilla movie, of a Showa Godzilla movie. Uh, super one of a kind. In, inside you see it says Office of Chairman. So I bought this and that's my birthday, October 6th. Not the year, but that's my birthday. I bought this um, and the seller did not know who actually owned this, but there's some really cool stuff in here. I'm not gonna take it out because I'm doing it with one hand, but there's there's drawings of King Ghidorah and Anguirus and etc. in there. Here's a lot of other paraphernalia that was used in preparation of the movie. A lot of handwritten stuff, schedules, call sheets. Um, got more diagrams back here. You could tell it's really old. Just a lot of stuff that was that was used in ultimately what would become Godzilla versus Gigon. See more panels here. Um, I might do a review where there's actually parts in the script that I have that are drawn in where they reference exactly what's on screen in Godzilla vs. Gigon. So they didn't change too much, but they changed a lot. But anyway, um, that was just a taste, but my phone battery is overheating because I've been blabbering for too much. But yeah, so that is my Godzilla collection for the most part. The MIA pieces are the X Plus Mothra 64 resin kit that is in my friend's basement because when I moved from another apartment, I didn't have the room. I had Zilla from the 1998 movie, The Trendmaster's Ultimate Godzilla. That was lost when I had to surrender the family storage. Um, I have a model kit in, you can't really see it here, it's a piece of furniture. It's the 50 centimeter scale Paradise Godzilla 1989. It broke into pieces uh, during my move. So that is not gonna see the light of day until it gets repaired. But anyway, I know this, this video is pretty long winded, but I'm, I'm super, super, um, super into collecting Godzilla as you can see. I don't have a very large collection by some people's standards, by other people's standards. I do have a large collection. I certainly think that I have an eclectic enough collection that's not yet representative of where I want to be. I wish I had more vintage stuff than that one shelf. There are some more historical key pieces that I would like. 
uh, such as a, a lot more poppies um, or poppies, poppy or poppy, and the tins, the Marathon and Bullmark tins. Those are on my grail list, and I aim to get a few of those. But right now, uh, the scripts form the core of my collection in terms of historical significance and importance. And the, um, this, the work included in this box that was used in production of Godzilla vs. Gigon, very one of a kind, and I'm lucky to have it. So thanks for watching, and thanks for listening to me drone on, but hopefully the toys distracted you enough to get excited, and I'm going to try to maintain my channel going forward. So thanks a lot, everybody.